Hello and welcome to this OncLive Peer Exchange Multidisciplinary Management of Local Regional Non-Small Cell Lung Cancer. Uh, I'm Dr. Mark Susinski from the Advent Health Cancer Institute in Orlando, Florida. Uh, joining me today in this virtual discussion are my colleagues, Dr. Roy Herbst, medical oncologist from Yale Cancer Center in New Haven, Connecticut. Dr. Stephen Liu, a medical oncologist from the Georgetown Lombardi Comprehensive Cancer Center in Washington, DC. Dr. Kristen Higgins, a radiation oncologist at Winship Cancer Institute of Emory University in Atlanta, Georgia. And lastly, Dr. Brendan Stiles, a thoracic surgeon from the Weill Cornell Medical Center in New York. Uh, today, we are going to discuss a number of topics pertaining to the use of systemic therapy in patients with stage one through three non-small cell lung cancer. We'll discuss the latest research in the field, including new data from the ASCO 2020 virtual meeting and the impact of recent clinical trials on making decisions around treatment selection. So let's get started on our first topic. Um, in this um, population of patients, Staging is uh, a cornerstone of making decisions about future therapies. So I wanted to ask uh, Brendan just to kind of give us his thoughts, particularly on something that I think historically in the U.S. has been um, uh, often is, is often a shortcut in the workup of patients, and that's adequate evaluation of the mediastinum. In, in, in defining pathologic involvement of mediastinal lymph nodes and the various techniques we have to do that mediastinoscopy versus EBUS and those sort, sorts of things. So kind of give us your perspective on that mediastinal staging. Who, who needs mediastinal staging? What's the best way to do it? Um, what are the pitfalls of EBUS? What are the pitfalls of mediastinoscopy? And just kind of start us off there. They raised some great points, Mark. I think as we're all excited to see both targeted therapy and immunotherapy moving into earlier stage disease, but as you allude to, staging obviously becomes critical there and the sequencing of therapy, whether we even choose to include surgery as part of the therapy or whether we go to definitive chemo radiation, staging is really critical for both resectable and unresectable patients. I think the key point is as you hinted, staging needs to be done and it's probably best not just done with just a PET scan, but by invasive mediastinal staging. This is generally a population that's getting considered for these trials because they're thought to have positive lymph nodes, either N1 or N2 nodes. And we know that if they have N1 nodes, they might have N2 nodes. If they have N2 nodes, they might have N3 nodes. So I think it's really inherent upon us to stage well and to stage multiple stations. I think that can be done well by, by lots of folks, whether it's a thoracic surgeon or a skilled pulmonologist. And I see EBUS and amidocinoscopy largely as interchangeable. I think the key is, is doing something. Certainly, EBUS has gained favor. It's easier on the patients. Um, it doesn't require an incision. And in many studies, it's actually more accurate. And I, I tend to believe that. I think particularly when you're looking for PET positive nodes and really going right to nodes that, that you're suspicious for, you can get there well with EBUS. You can do multiple samples, and the yield is very high. I think the one thing that's interesting where, as we've moved towards EBUS and really largely away from mediastinoscopy, I think the incidental um, N positive stuff, whether it's incidental N2 or N3, we're not probably finding as much. If you see a patient with bulky N2 disease, in the old days, we'd stick a metastinoscope down and, and sort of by default, you'd get some N3 from the other side, just some small nodes. With EBUS, the tendency is a little bit more to guide yourself towards just the big nodes and the smaller nodes that you think are perhaps not positive, a little bit more challenging. That can have some significant implications for the patients though, is, is from being 3A to 3B or 3C. So I, you know, I'm in favor of at least making sure that we sample both sides, really trying to narrow down the nodal involvement and to come up with an accurate stage. And then, and then uh, it's just as important to do intraoperatively mediastinal staging. Could you comment on that? Well, that's really key. And I think as, as we talk about adjuvant trials, and I'm sure as, as Roy will talk about his trial, understanding which patient's benefit is really gonna be key on doing good surgical staging during the operation. And there's a big difference from calling a patient stage one and taking one or two lymph nodes out and calling a patient stage one and having sampled 31 nodes. Increasingly, as we understand that we have agents that might be beneficial in the adjuvant setting, that idea of staging them well surgically, making sure that we get a lot of N1 nodes and a lot of N2 nodes so that we can be accurate there is really critical. And it probably has some implications for disease recurrence as well. And then this issue of, um, um, you know, the term we've is so cemented in our 
lung cancer culture, this term unresectable stage three is un does unresectable mean you can't resect it or does it mean you shouldn't resect it? Uh, give us your perspective on that. Yeah, I think the latter is true. I always say that resectability like beauty is sort of in the eye of the beholder. I think anything yeah. can be, be resected. Now the question is really, should we resect it? And we know that there's probably some that we shouldn't. And, and I tend to think of that as bulky multi-station N2 disease. Certainly that's gonna act more the equivalent of systemic disease. But even more importantly, I tend to think of, I, I pause when I know that I'm gonna to have to go down the pneumonectomy road with one of these patients with a high burden of disease. I think that inflicts almost a second disease upon patients. And I think it leads them down a long road where they're not gonna tolerate systemic therapy and they're gonna have a harder time on any of these trials that we're talking about. That said, have I done it? And, and do I think it's appropriate for some surgeons? <clears throat> yes, in young patients with excellent performance status. But in general, the data has, has suggested that pneumonectomy patients do worse. Now, if I can do a lobectomy, I might be a little bit more aggressive with a patient even with multi-station N2 disease. But I think the real question is, is should it be resected? And I think that the challenge yeah. of that is that answer is probably different depending on, on where you are, your institution, your surgeon's comfort levels. Yeah, let, let me ask Kristen, at least in my mind, it's, this is kind of an extension of it is obviously as you get to the perimeter of the surgical ability to resect something, you get into bulky disease and, and you know, volume and radiotherapy is so important. And we know that the toxicities is not necessarily related to radiating the cancer. It's, re, it's what the normal tissue around the cancer gets and, and lives there. So, so what are your thoughts on, on, on radiation, radiation issues as they relate to a tumor volume? Sure. So stage three patients, the radiation technologies that we employ to treat these patients have evolved tremendously over the past several decades. Um, in my mind, any stage three patient is treatable to a curative dose with radiation. We're typically using IMRT technique to treat patients that have bulky disease, that have contralateral mediastinal nodes, or mediastinal and hilar nodes, and three nodes. But you can deliver 60 gray safely with these advanced technologies. Um, and if you have dosimetrists and physicists experienced in planning radiation uh, treatment plans for bulky disease, you can typically achieve your doses to your normal organs at risk such that you won't hurt the patient. And I think part of that is um, expertise that you develop when you treat a high volume of lung cancer patients. Um, but you know, I think it can be delivered safely certainly also in community settings. And it's really changed what can be treated safely with radiation when it comes to stage three disease. I think almost every stage three patient can be treated safely with our uh, latest and greatest technologies.